Hey guys, after much consideration and thought, I think I'm about to embark on a new endeavor. If you want to know more, stick around. Hello and welcome back into the channel, everyone. If you are new here, this channel is all about reselling. So my name is Andrew, and along with my wife, Jessica, we run a full-time online reselling business named Five Little Ducks Resale. So during the course of our business, we go to garage sales, thrift stores, and estate sales. We buy items for cheap, and then we flip those items online for a profit on sites like Mercari, Poshmark, and eBay. So I've been absent off of YouTube for a couple of weeks, and one of the biggest reasons why is because my oldest daughter, Deidre, recently got married. So here's a picture of the beautiful bride and her husband, Cade. So we love you both guys, and we wish you the very best, and here's to you. So now that I'm making videos again, I thought that I would tell you guys about a new endeavor that I've been thinking about. No, I'm not going to be quitting YouTube, or I'm not going to be quitting eBay or anything like that, at least not in the short term, but this endeavor that I'm thinking about has actually come about from a problem that I've been having. So let me kind of give you the end of the story first, and I'll kind of tell you my logic and how I got there. And this whole new endeavor really has to do with Legos. So in the end, my ultimate goal is to probably, in addition to everything else that we have going on, eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, and so on, but is to open up a BrickLink store to sell individual Legos. Now, if that sounds crazy to you, you're definitely not alone. Uh, this project is definitely not for the faint of heart. I mean, think about it. There are thousands of different Lego types, each with colors and variations and styles, and I, I can't even begin to tell you the nightmare that I'm about to embark on. However, I think that if I explain it in this way, it may make a little bit more sense. So. Again, this BrickLink store, this sort of thing in the future, this is going to be step 1,000 in this 1,000-step journey, okay? I'm currently on step one. And really, this all comes about because this endeavor is meant to solve a problem. And this problem is, is that I've been spending too much on replacement Legos. So... If you have been a viewer of the channel, you know that back around Thanksgiving of last year, we made this gigantic Lego buy and other toys as well. And we've been selling off Legos ever since. Now, this has really been a fun thing for me. I've really enjoyed it. Yes, it's tedious. Yes, there's a lot of work. Yes, there's a lot of moving pieces. But it's actually been quite rewarding, and the money isn't bad either. So where this problem comes in is that as I'm going through and trying to find pieces for completing these sets, I might find that I'm missing a piece here or there. And because I am not really organized in all of my Legos, I end up going out and buying a piece and, and lo and behold, I run across the same piece that I just bought. So the problem comes in is that I'm spending a lot of extra money on buying replacement Legos. Now that doesn't sound too bad, but when you add up all the costs with shipping and taxes, whatever, I've spent over $100 in replacement Legos alone. Now keep in mind that the replacement Lego costs themselves is actually quite minuscule. It's probably not more than a couple of dollars, but it's all of the shipping and the taxes and all that other stuff that adds up over time. And this problem is a direct function of me not being organized. So yes, I understand that I have a kind of a scheme where I have all of the Legos broken down by color, but now what you might not know is that I've been amassing Legos by buying them at garage sales and other things over time, and so I have this other personal collection that I have that I could, in theory, pull from and not have to buy additional Legos. Now, there's no guarantee that I'm going to have every piece that I'm eventually going to need, but if I'm more organized, at least I know what I have before I go out and make a purchase. Now, it's not just this big Lego buy that I'm worried about. So for instance, we did a buy a few weekends back where we bought that Fort Lego Rado set, and there have been some other you know, opportunities at garage sales where I've been able to purchase different Lego sets, and having a vast resource of Legos on hand to complete those sets increases my chances of selling them for top dollar. So in my mind, the way to combat this is to organize my entire collection of Legos in a way that it's easy for me to tell what I have at any given moment. 
And of course, this isn't going to be a very fast or easy process. There's going to be a lot of moving parts. And this is the reason why I'm trying to go slow and think about it in a methodical way so that I don't end up going through my collection multiple times over, trying to get different organization methods six months after I choose one. Ultimately, where I see this leading is that if I am very organized and if I have everything broken out in a fashion that it makes sense, then I can easily transition that over to a BrickLink store, which is where you would absolutely have to be spot on with your inventory. Not only would you have to know all of the parts that you have, but you also would have to know where they're located. So again, that's all in the future. That's all decisions that can be made down the road. But what I'm attempting to do at this point is to start that journey, is to get organized. And that's really the new endeavor that I'm talking about. So I spent the last couple of days sorting and cleaning all of the bulk Legos that I have. The stuff that I've picked up at garage sales and, and whatnot over time have just been sitting there thinking that I was going to probably just pick out the good pieces and maybe sell the rest in bulk, which I have done in the past. Now I've had limited success, but I think that I might want to try this other angle despite the fact that no, it's not gonna be a super big money maker, and no, it's not gonna be a quick thing at all. But in the end, I think that being organized and having a way to make money at the very end is going to be the long-term goal. So drop a comment below and tell me what you guys think of this idea. Now, I know that I'm not crazy because there are literally thousands of BrickLink stores all across the country, and in fact, all around the world. And because I've purchased Legos, I've had the need to purchase Legos, I know that there are other people out there that are going to be in the same boat. So whether or not I'm going to be making any real money off of it will remain to be seen. But I wanted to definitely get you in on the ground level so that you can watch the process unfold. So speaking of that, like I said, I spent the last couple of days organizing Legos. I want to walk you through the process because, again, it's quite tedious, but in the end, it was quite rewarding. Well, after a number of hours this morning sorting, I'm finally finished sorting all of my loose Legos. Now, this doesn't account for any of the Legos that we purchased back in November during that big, big Lego haul. These are all Legos that I had purchased after the fact or even before the fact that were just either sitting around loose or some recent um, buys that I've been meaning to sort. So... It's pretty crazy. I kind of started off with space around these piles, but as more and more bricks got added to them, you can see that the space between the piles has severely lessened. And uh, so now I'll have to actually dig a few of these different piles out. So this is just the first step. Like I said before, this is going to be probably a, a thousand step process. And this is, honest to God, the first one. So if this isn't crazy enough with all the different bricks, right? Just imagine this, which is all minifig pieces and parts. And I don't even know what's in there. There's a lot of minifig parts. There's a lot of accessories, some tires, some hubs, some pre-printed uh, pieces, some flowers, all of my transparent, my Technic pieces here, some more specialized ones over here. So now that I have actually sorted all of these, it's now time to wash them. And I wouldn't normally do that, but a couple of the buys, the Legos were just horribly sticky and gross, and my hands are filthy after going through them. And what you just saw in the time lapse there was actually the ending part of some fairly easy buys that I did. I knew that there were a lot of... Uh, similar type Lego sets that were together in that. But the one that you didn't see, the one that I was spending the majority of the time on, um, was this bin over here. And this bin is giant. It's probably two feet long. Um, obviously, I have some plates left over in there. But that is what I had sorted uh, starting last night and finished up today. And so 
a lot of that stuff was imposter Legos. And so it was mega blocks and some Hasbro blocks that I ended up trashing. So all that stuff down there is either not Legos or Legos that have been discolored, as you can see here, that will not be available. And so this last pile over here are things that could be Legos that I have to look up and see if I can identify them. Um, and yes, because my eyesight is bad at my age, I do use a little loop to identify because all those Lego pieces are stamped with the Lego logo on there. So like I said, the next step in all of this is to take each color and wash and dry them. Um, wouldn't normally do that, but like I had mentioned before, the one of the last batches was really gross. But I figured I'd give them all a wash. It doesn't take that long, but I'll walk you through that process here. My goal today is just to get through the bricks and to get those at least cleaned, washed, and put away. I might then separate these out and put them into bags because I don't know if I'm going to have time to deal with these today. Um, I do have a couple of orders yet to pack, but maybe after that I'll come back to this stuff. But this is a nightmare in and of itself, as you can probably imagine. So I guess the next step is to give these a bath. All right, so the first step in getting these things washed is I'm going to choose just kind of a standard size kind of a Tupperware container that I'm going to use. And I'm going to pick a color that doesn't seem to have too many. Uh, the last batch that I did, I ended up mixing colors that were kind of contrasting so I could easily find them. But because I have so many extra Legos this time, I think I'm just going to stick to a single color. So bear with me here. I'm just going to get all these blues. If I can one hand. Maybe you can see, I don't know if you can see on here, there's a lot of grime. Oh yeah, that's picking up good. Disgusting. That's why we gotta wash them all off. So standard blue color is what we're going to do first. And like I said, these piles grew closer and closer together. So what I'm gonna do is I have my seat down here with my little bucket. I'm just gonna Funnel them all down there. And that should hopefully speed up the process of getting me into the washer. Now, I know some of you are thinking, why on earth would you take the time to do this? And I agree with you. The, the argument can be made for sure that this is a huge time suck and is it really worth it in the end? And the only way that I can answer that is if I actually get into the process to figure it out and to answer that for myself. So I'm, I'm not the only one to have started this procedure or this process, this journey. And I know it's not going to be a huge money maker, but unless I start, I don't know if it's going to work. All right, so I think I have all of the blues. So on to the next step. All right, so I've transitioned over to the next station, which is in the kitchen. And you can see my bin of blue Legos here. And I'm going to add just a wee little bit of OxyClean to the bin. And because I'm not dealing with a ton of water, I don't need a whole lot. Literally just a very little bit. So that goes in there. And move that over to the side. I'm gonna get some hot water or as hot as I can get out of the faucet. Let that run for just a second. Then I will fill up the blue Legos. Get enough to cover them. And next step here is to cover this up. And we shake. How long? I don't know. We usually try to do about 30 seconds worth of shaking. I won't bore you with the rest of this process, but you get the idea. So with all of the Legos now bathed, this is rinse time. So I will dump everything into here and rinse thusly. 
And this rinsing is actually going to be a two-step process as well, or at least the rinsing and the drying. So obviously thoroughly mix and rinse, making sure this doesn't get tipped over and down the disposal, because that would not be good. And it's even harder to do one-handed. But you get the idea. So let me finish this one up and I'll move on to the next process. Well, now that we have a calendar full of freshly washed blue Lego bricks, uh, the next step might be a little bit unorthodox, but, and I, and I can't take credit for it because I have heard of other Lego sellers uh, do this as well, but I am going to employ a salad spinner to get rid of the excess water. Now, this I don't know why I didn't think of this originally, but there's a lot of water that just gets built up. You can see in there that there's a lot of water that sticks underneath these bricks that you just can't get out. And if you were to just to lay them on the towel, it would take a, quite a while to uh, evaporate on their own. So what I have done is, of course, pour all the bricks into the salad spinner. And the pieces are big enough where they're not going to go through. And let's do this here. Lock it into place and give it a whirl. Hard to do one-handed, but once you get it going, as you can already see, a lot of the water gets built up. So let me spin this a few times and I'll show you the results of that. So after a few rounds of spinning, I think these are ready to get set out to dry. So basically, uh, did a couple of spins, open the thing up, kind of mix them around, just to make sure that they're all get spun accordingly. And of course you can see a little bit of moisture on there, but that's fine, because that's where the next step comes in. So the inner basket comes out, and just to show you how much water this will actually remove, that's actually quite a bit. So it does help the process of drying them out. So the next step is to put them all on a towel. And we just kind of let them air dry from here. Now I'll do actually a couple of different stations. I'll do one color here, I'll do another color on this one, and then I'll actually take them into the living room where I'll put on the fan and just let the air kind of go onto the pieces themselves. Uh, but I'll let these sit and I'll go grab another color and I'll repeat this whole process. And we'll go from there. So that is the next step in all of this. So it is a work in progress for sure. So let me grab another color and I will show you the next step momentarily. And through the magic of editing and of course not having to show you all that stuff, that next batch is done. This was the yellow bricks. So same sort of methodology, just lay them out to dry. And that salad spinner does a really good job of getting a lot of that excess moisture out of there. And at this point, the bricks are really clean. Um, you know, I think that that method of the, using the OxyClean and then just a good solid rinse and a spin definitely works. Sorry about the noise, they're running some dishes right now as well. <laughs> Multitasking, always. So we'll let these air dry, and um, I'm going to move both of these batches here in just a bit. Like I said before, off into the living room, where we will let the fan uh, hit them for a little bit, and then we'll put them into their semi-final resting spot. Well, now that the fan has been sitting on these for a little while, they are fairly dry and ready to be put in, like I said before, their almost final resting spot. So I actually have a bag over here on the couch of already sorted and washed Legos, and these are all sorted by color. That's a bag of odd colors and transparents and minifigs and whatnot. But as you can see here, after I get through all that, there we go. So we have some lime green, we have some brown, we have red, 
and other colors. So these will sit in here until I determine my next organizational phase. Um, like I said, this is just step one. Um, really, in order for me to proceed, I just have to go very slowly step by step because I don't want to jump in too far down the road um, without thinking each step through just because there's a lot of organization and a lot of different pieces, a lot of moving pieces, obviously. And I just don't want to have to go through this collection more than once. And I understand that things evolve over time and I could have changed my mind after getting down the road some way. But at least now, once all of the Legos have been sorted and washed, I can at least pause here. And if I need to refer to these bags while I'm completing other sets or looking for things, at least that way I'm not spending a whole lot of extra money and time ordering pieces that I know that I have somewhere. And that will allow me to kind of consider my next steps as far as how I want to organize these going forward. And then ultimately, if that transitions over into a BrickLink store, well, we will see from there. So uh, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense as to my madness over these last couple days. So drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. Do I, am I absolutely crazy or does it sound like a very plausible thing. Like I said, it's not going to be a moneymaker, uh, at least anytime soon, um, but it'll at least serve a couple of purposes by organizing, getting things where they need to be, so that I know what I have, so that I know that I can complete different sets and whatnot. So let me know what you think. Hope you found that exciting or maddening or somewhere in between. Thank you for watching. Well, now would you look at that? That is a clean table from what it was before earlier in the day. Obviously, it's much later in the uh, in the day than what it was, but th that's the end result right there. And I'm gonna try to pull up this bin here that's next to me uh, that has kind of the end result. So bear with me one second and I'll go through it. But this was the culmination of today. This was actually a really big project that I've had in my mind for a while. And this is really the first step. So again, um, if I can remember where I left off, you can, you can see the process that I did. We basically sorted all of my loose Legos. Again, these are not the Legos that we bought over Thanksgiving. Those are still down here. So you can see these are all of the ones that I still have yet to assemble into those sets. Now, my thought again, was that if I needed a set or a piece from here and I didn't have it, I would consult my own library of Legos before I went out and made a purchase. And now it's going to be much easier, at least in the short term, to find what I need. So they're all organized by color. Um, I will organize probably by part type uh, in the future when I do get other uh, cabinets and whatnot and Again, that's going to be further on down the road uh, in correlation with the uh, BrickLink store, I think. Um, but at least for right now, I know what I have. And that's the biggest challenge getting to this point. So it's all organized by color. I have miscellaneous things down here, transparent minifigures, tires. I have miscellaneous uh, big plates, such and such. So... Had to invest a day's worth of work, but I think that it turned out in the end. Now, I don't know if I can put the lid back on that, but um, that was that was well worth it. That's very satisfying to be able to take that pile of chaos and wash it and sort it and get it all put away. And I think that that's going to go a long way towards this goal that I have. So, um, yeah, so that's basically about it. I guess if you have any questions or comments, drop them below. And uh, thanks again for watching. So what do you guys think? Am I completely crazy for wanting to do this? Uh, I mean, the more that I think about it, the more that I would like to do it. Um, I understand that it's a gigantic time commitment and there's a lot of decisions to be made, but I think I'm gonna just go step by step, kind of take it slow, and I'll take you guys along with me for the journey. So drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. I'm always happy to, to entertain your thoughts. And, um, you know, if you tell me that I'm, I'm crazy, I'll certainly take that into consideration as well. So now that I've made you guys suffer through that, uh, we'll go ahead and transition over to the sales portion of today's video. Now, because I've been absent for the last couple of weeks, our sales for this time period are from March 10 to March 16. So a couple of weeks back, obviously I was gone, like I said, 
Um, we only have eBay and Mercari sales, no Poshmark sales. Uh, so we'll, let's jump right in. And the first sale of this video was actually from that big vintage Star Wars toy haul. This was the vintage 1978 Star Wars Hammerhead action figure with the green top variant. He ended up selling for $7.99 plus shipping. Now, I don't think that this green top variant had really any merit. It's just that a lot of the listings that I saw looked like he had a blue top. And so I don't know if it was because of the way that it was stored or whatnot over time. He just kind of got discolored strangely. But I wanted to make a note of that for sure. The next item was this Nike women's size small, dark blue and teal cropped drawstring athletic pants. These sold for $11.99 plus shipping. The next item was also from that vintage Star Wars haul. This was the 1979 Star Wars Tauntaun closed belly action figure with no reins, but it did have a saddle. And this sold for $12.99 plus shipping. Next up was this vintage Union Pacific Railroad We Can Handle It embroidered shirt or uniform patch. This sold for $2.99 plus shipping. The next item was from our Gina consignment sale. This was a new with tags, Granimals two pack of boys, size 2T, elastic waist shorts in coal gray and green camo. And together these sold for $4.99 plus shipping. This next item was a consignment sale from my youngest daughter, Melina. This was a pair of Gymshark women's size medium loose fit gym shorts. These sold for $12.99 plus shipping. Next up, we had this vintage tennis racket. This was a Wilson Speedflow Jack Kramer wooden tennis racket, and it sold for $14.99 plus shipping. Next up was another Gina sale. This was a new with tags, Jones, New York, ladies size 8 petite, pink rough tweed button-up lined coat. And this sold for $19.99 plus shipping. Next up, another Gina sale. This was a Wonder Nation boy size large, teal and gray short sleeve raglan t-shirt. And it sold for $3.99 plus shipping. Next up was this new sealed Hello Kitty 8-pack of party invites, which sold for $3.99 plus shipping. Next up, another vintage Star Wars haul. In fact, this was the second of the two Tauntauns. Again, it was the 1979 Star Wars Tauntaun closed belly action figure with the saddle but no reins, sold again for $12.99 plus shipping. Next up was a really good sale. This was the Ultimate Soldier World War II P-51D Mustang. This was a 1-18th scale model. This was gigantic, and it sold for $274.99 plus shipping. This was actually the second of two similar sales. Uh, we picked these up from the thrift store that my daughter used to work at. Uh, these were actually half off when we picked them up, so I think we bought them for maybe $75 a piece. Um, but yeah, 75 into 275, definitely a good sale. Next up, we had this set of two vintage Conan the Barbarian paperback books by Robert E. Howard. Together, these sold for $14.99 plus shipping. Following that was this pair of Judy Blue women's size 14W relaxed fit medium wash high rise denim jeans. And these sold for $24.99 plus shipping. The next item was another consignment sale, but this time it was from our family friend, Larry. This was a Disney Store Tigger necktie, which was 100% silk, and it sold for $9.99 plus shipping. Following that was this Six Flags Looney Tunes April Birthstone Metallic Charm Bracelet, and it sold for $9.99 plus shipping. The next item was, again, from that vintage Star Wars toy haul. This was the 1978 Star Wars White TIE Fighter. It was being sold as parts only for repair or rebuild, and it went for $24.99 plus shipping. And the next item was yet another consignment sale from, this time, our friend Carol Ann. And this was a Citizen EcoDrive Men's Solar Wristwatch, which ended up selling on a best offer of $85.00 plus shipping. And the final eBay sale of today's video was for this vintage 1980s Teddy Ruxpin Grubby, the yellow caterpillar. He was a two and a half inch flocked toy. 
and he sold on a best offer of $7.43 plus shipping. And of course, we'll transition over to Mercari. As I said before, there aren't any Poshmark sales. So the first Mercari sale from this time period was this vintage backgammon set. This was the faux leather folding travel case, which was complete with instructions. And this sold for $17 plus shipping. Following that was this 1998 new with tags, Thai Beanie Babies Canyon, the Cougar Cat. And he sold for $5 plus shipping. This next item came from my father's estate. This was a Department of Veterans Affairs MVP Million Veteran Program metal and enamel lapel pin, and it sold for $10 plus shipping. Next up was this Shonen Jump manga book. This was Dr. Slump Volume 10 in English, of course, and it sold for $20 plus shipping. Next up was this Hello Kitty girl's size large heather gray one shoulder romper outfit which sold for ten dollars plus shipping and the last mercari sale of the video was this pair of asics women's size nine and a half gel duo max silver and pink running shoes and these sold for eleven dollars plus shipping well guys that's the end of today's video i hope that you enjoyed the topic i know that it was a little bit weird for some um, maybe others have embraced it a little bit more fully. That's great. Uh, like I said earlier, drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I'm, I'm curious to know what you think. So with that, again, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you like this sort of content, uh, go ahead and like today's video. And if you don't mind, consider even subscribing to the channel uh, because it really does help us out. So with that, thank you again. I'm glad to be back and I'll catch you on the next one.